Our next uh, submission is from uh, Gun City. We have David Tipple and Nicholas Taylor with us, I believe. Mr. Tipper, welcome to uh, the committee. Um, as per uh, the other submissions, we have 15 minutes to hear from you. So within that time, we welcome your uh, uh, comments you wish to put <coughs> into our attention. Within that time, there is time for questions from committee members. Right. Thank you. Thank you. My name's David Tipple. This is my eldest son, Matthew Tipple, and he's prepared some uh, facts uh, and figures based on our records from having been a uh, firearms dealer for 40 years. I'm here today because it was the murder's primary objective to divide us and to cause violent unrest in the USA. Quite the reverse has occurred. This tragedy has created an unprecedented unity throughout our country. We need to ensure that this unity and empathy is extended to legal gun owners, those working in the industry and their families. Rushing this Good feel law is causing division. It is bad law and it will result in serious injustices. Worse, it ignores what went wrong. There are no loopholes in the existing law. This happened because he broke numerous laws. He was able to use a 30 round magazine. He was stopped when he was overpowered using a low capacity gun. Understandably, all of us in New Zealand cry out for a solution, a way to feel safer against hatred and madness. The gun solution is a seven round limited magazine. When he used it, he was able to be disarmed and it ended his attack. The murderer wanted his actions to restrict all kinds of firearms being owned by law-abiding citizens. If you pass this law in its present form, you will be helping him win. His aim wasn't public safety. His aim was not public safety. His aim was for division and intolerance and hatred, and he was using a firearms debate to get his way. We can ensure larger magazines cannot be clipped into A-category guns. A-category holders can have their guns permanently modified to prevent them being able to fit a large magazine. This is the most effective solution and would reduce the cost of compensation by more than 50%. Imagine the public support for having $411 million to spend where it will save more lives in reducing violence against children, on which we have a terrible record, on teenage suicides, where we fear the worst in the world, on drug use, not to mention teachers, nurses and police. E-category holders have been safely endorsed for 27 years. They are stringently vetted and have proven themselves to be law-abiding. There is no need to impose any more restrictions on them. Allow applications for E-category licence. This reduces the cost of compensation and encourages compliance and a proven pub with a proven public safety success. So what's wrong and unjust about the proposed law? It hasn't addressed how he got his license. It takes away rights that don't need to be taken. It promises to pay some of us, but not all of us, an unknown value and at an unknown time. There are livelihoods at stake here. Some contractors can't afford the next gun until the seized gun is paid for. They should be compensated for their loss of income. 
the pests that they're controlling need to be controlled. At great cost to the taxpayer, the Department of Conservation will be filling their role for pest control while they wait for their money. Dealers will need to return goods to the supplier, we're told. What does the supplier do with them? It's impossible for him to unmanufacture it. He can't unmanufacture the guns or parts that are made in New Zealand. And in most cases, it won't be possible to export the gun or parts. Many of these were special orders to suit New Zealand conditions, and there's no other country that's going to want them as we wanted them. Uh, the government is asking me to export these, I presume, because they're saying send them back to your supplier. But the government says they won't export. That's a double standard. Bad law causes uncertainty, injustice and division. This law is bad. We have many different views. Our strength and our unity is because we accept differences and we tolerate them. Passing this law means the murderer wins. I don't want him to win. Let's take time to truly understand the causes and the preventions for this Australian's attack, attack on New Zealanders. The total cost, $726 million. That's three quarters of a billion dollars. If you bring in the savings that I've talked about here, shotguns, 97 million, rim fires and non-semi-autos, a saving of 41 million, E-categories, a, sa a saving of 127 million, conversions to A-category, a saving of 142 million. That cost reduces from 726 to 315 a saving of $411 million. So we've gone through our sales and we've um, accepted the lower estimate of 1.5 million guns that are in the country. There's plenty of people that would say there's 2 million and uh, there's very good reasons uh, to, to, to um, agree with that. But let's... We've done it on the on the lower estimate of 1.5 million, and Matthew's got um, some figures that he'd like to share with you on the individual costs. Do we still have the time? Uh, uh, yes, but I'd encourage you to uh, uh, explain that fairly quickly, so we have some time for questions from committee members. Um, so, ba so basically, we've analysed our company's sales data since June 2016, and we've got different locations across New Zealand to get the ratios and average values of each type of firearm that's prohibited under the new bill. Um, and this total of three quarters of a billion buyback um, is estimated based on there being 1.5 million firearms in New Zealand. So um, we have had uh, that figure reported um, from a 1997 figure that we thought reported that, that where that is today could, could be much higher. So I've got that information available and I'm happy to answer any questions around that. Okay. Uh, do you have right, copies you of the copy? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Might be yeah. two, two pages. Um, one has got the total buyback and the second page yeah. is um, so with, the, Clark, with the reduction um, as suggested. Okay, thank you. We'll move into uh, some questions now. Look, I'll, I'll start. If you were not sitting here facing me, but um, you're sitting here facing the people who just submitted to us before you, who you heard, representatives from our Muslim community, how would you go about um, explaining and justifying that the right to own these military-style semi-automatic weapons, and let's face it, your right to sell and profit for them, is a more important right than their right to feel safe in the wake of what has happened? Uh, well, it's very clear, Michael. Uh, nobody will ever be completely safe from a lone madman who is determined to, to cause murder. Uh, he stated a number of options. And so if this was just about uh, killing people, 
he, he said he could have killed a lot more, but this wasn't about killing people. This was about dividing people. You do not think the attack was about killing people? I think that his motive, as he stated in his manifesto, was about <laughs> causing division, and he most certainly used killing people to do it, but he said that he could have killed more people with other devices. Yet he chose not to. He chose to use these weapons. Why do you think that was? As he stated, to cause division. Um, so, Mr Tipple, thanks for coming today and your submission. Um, how many of the firearms of the sort that the um, alleged offender has used, how many of those have you been selling since 15th March? Um, I don't have any figures for that, but it would be... Um, it would be dozens, not hundreds. <clears throat> dozens, not hundreds. And um, of what, throughout your gun shops? Yes. Okay. Um, do you think you should have warned people that these would be made illegal? I think that uh, what was likely to happen to the firearms was made very clear. Have you sent out any emails or correspondence to your usual customers or customers that you have on your database asking them to submit against this bill? Uh, I've asked them to sign the petition to ask the bill to be slowed down. Slowed down. And Mr Tipple, when uh, you are selling these firearms, have you ever sold with them? Uh, ammunition or magazines that would be illegal under the law as it has been? Well, the ammunition is never going to be uh, uh, illegal. That, that gun's entitled to have them. And no, we do. We have never sold yeah. an E-category magazine with an A-category So magazine. do you believe that ammunition, to buy ammunition, one should have to have a firearms licence? Yes, and that's the law, Miss. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Can you think of any reason why anybody would not have to have a firearms licence before they would need to buy ammunition? No. And cartridge and magazines? And magazines. I believe that uh, uh, large capacity magazines should always have been regulated and they were not. And they, they were not? No. And you believe that they should have? Now we can see they should have. Our previous thinking was that a magazine that was capable of being held, uh, uh, used in a, uh, a non-semi-automatic uh, was legitimate for sale to someone who was going to use it in a bolt action. And of course, they uh, were an effective pest control uh, tool. But this person turned his A-category semi-automatic into an E-category by illegally fitting the large magazine. Which he got from? Don't know. Okay. Not from us. Not from you? No. Right. Okay. David Seymour. Yes, I just wanted to ask about these cost estimates. Um, these appear to be based on 100% of weapons that you estimate are out there being uh, brought back. Mm. <coughs> How confident are you that all the weapons would be brought back well, that's not for us to guess at, is it? Um, if you're asking what the mood is, um, that's just a, a matter of opinion. Um, but if you look at experience, if you look at the United Kingdom, um, then it was a tiny percentage of what was out there. If you look at New Zealand in 1992, it was a low percentage of what was out there. So uh, experience tells us that unless there is generous compensation, there is a great reduction in compliance. Thank you. Thank you. Chris Bishop. Um, thank you. You said before that you didn't think, uh, well, you now realise, or you, you've always believed that um, high capacity magazines should be regulated. That, that's what you said, right? No, I said we didn't before, but now we should. Okay, all right. So I was going to say, if that was the case, why were you selling them? Uh, well, from the day of this event, we we restricted the sales of them. 
no, just a quick supplementary. Uh, just, just, a, just a quick supplementary follow up on that. So, uh, a magazine hmm. that is designed for a bolt action, that, are, there, are there also semi automatic weapons that have the same magazine yes. attachment? So, so they're transferable. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Deborah Russell, let me uh, you've asked my question. questions, that's all right. Okay, in that case, Mark Patterson. Oh, thank you. Um, so I'm interested in, the, you know, if we look at, say, the Federated Farmers um, submission, or we've just had the um, Mountain Safety uh, Council in representing hunters, um, they're, they're saying that we're probably not too far away if we were drawn the line, because this is this is what sort of the guts of this, or it's taking all the social commentary out, it's where we draw the line on the hardware. So um, you would know exactly what the proportion of your sales are for these legitimate arms that will still be available to, to hunters and farmers and whatever, and the ones that will now be illegal. Are you able to give us... A That's all on the spreadsheet so, there. So that, so that will, we'll be able to work that out. Yes, that all on the spreadsheet yeah. there. Okay, Mr Tipple, we thank you for your submission. We didn't raise the... Uh, the issue of the number of rounds. Did we? Did we um... No, but we do have to finish the submission now. Wow, we have to hear from the College of Surgeons. Um, you are welcome to send us any further comments by six o'clock tonight, which can be considered as a submission. Thank you.